friends and welcome to week two of Gerb August. This week is Paperbacks from Hell and Vintage Smut. I am skipping the vintage smut part and just doing some good old fashioned modern smut, uh, which I've already started. I'm starting this vlog a little bit later in the week. It's already Tuesday afternoon. Uh, I just had a very hectic couple of days, so it was tough to actually sit down and vlog, but now I have some time. Uh, and yeah, I read a couple of books. Not trash at all. It's actually a new release, but I wanted to talk about it. I did finish The Ark for Delicate Condition uh, by Danielle V. something V. <laughs> I, I just looked at it. I forgot her last name. Uh, but this was so good. So this is what uh, the new season of American Horror Story is going to be based off of, which is really cool because I don't think they've ever done that before. I don't think they've done like a book and like adaptation. I don't know why I did like I was thinking like emergence <laughs> but this was really cool. It had a lot of modern day Rosemary Rosemary's Babies vibes uh, and yeah I really enjoyed it. It was like a great thriller uh, with so, a lot of horror towards the end but I feel like it's just the thriller horror book. It's not like all horror. <laughs> uh, but this is about a, an actress who kind of just made it big. Uh, she is well recognized now um, after struggling for a while um, and she is older uh, and she is going through the I, I, is it IFG? IF, I, I forget what it's called. The um, infertility uh, treatment stuff. Uh, and I never heard such an account of it. It sounds horrific and painful. Uh, and yeah, so that's what she's going through. And she finally gets pregnant and then is told that she miscarried. Uh, but she doesn't believe that. And that's pretty much all I'm going to say about this one. Uh, the ending was a little predictable. I kind of predicted what happened and I don't usually attempt to even think about it. Uh, but I just was kind of like, oh, I bet this is it. <laughs> um, and it was, uh, but I still enjoyed it, uh, because it could have gone two ways and it went like another way. Uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed this one. I think I'm leaning towards like a 4.5 or a 5 star because it's awesome. The author's note is amazing. And yeah, I'm super excited for this season of American Horror Story, which is funny because I haven't been excited since like Apocalypse. I feel like it's been a while since I've actually been excited for a new season. Uh, so yeah, I will definitely be watching. Uh, and then uh, as for the smut, I already read um, Love, Laugh, Lich by Kate Pryor. I listened to this one on Scribd and uh, it's kind of funny. This is part of the Monsters in Cubicles series. This is like a corporate job but there's monsters and uh, we follow a girl who her boss is a lich and some interesting stuff happens when we get to the smut part. I was like, okay, and I honestly, I just kept thinking about the, the lich from freaking Adventure Time, and it just like made me sad for Billy, Ugh, Billy. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I that which is weird to think about Adventure Time and while well, reading smut. So uh, <laughs> I did think it went by really fast, um, which is fine. It's like a two-hour audiobook, but I listened at like two times speed, so it went by super fast. It was pretty funny, uh, so I think I'm leaning towards like a 2.5 uh, because I just kept thinking about Adventure Time, which is weird, uh, and yeah, I'll round up to three on Goodreads, you know. It, it is what it is. Um, I was laughing out loud during the smutty parts, though, with some stuff. I was like, this is ridiculous was funny. Um, and then I ended up reading The Mask by Dean Koontz. I listened to this one on script as well. Uh, this was a really short audiobook. It was only eight hours. Uh, and yeah, it was really interesting actually. Uh, I feel like the title of this is misleading and the cover is misleading because it doesn't 
really even have to do with like a mask it's like more of a metaphor uh and yeah this is about a woman who also is kind of like that's funny because it's similar to delicate condition a little bit in the way a woman is um well they're looking to adopt because she's unable to have children and she is older uh and yeah um what else can i say about this <laughs> without giving away because it's kind of like three stories in one that all come together at the end uh but basically she ends up hitting this girl with her car <laughs> that's a, that was kind of a funny part of it and she ends up like connecting to this girl uh but this woman has some past stuff and that comes up and then there's like another lady in this cat that's like evil i was laughing out loud i thought it was hilarious this was like a really fun uh kind of scary kind of creepy very weird and bizarre lifetime movie i think like it was um not bad <laughs> it's just weird and also i don't think dean coons likes cats i mean he didn't do this cat super dirty but it was like just an evil cat which i thought was hilarious uh so i think i'm leaning towards a three star for this um i actually enjoyed listening to it and i listened to it like in one day it was like super fast so that i was surprised i liked it uh i think this is my second Koontz book um and yeah i enjoyed it more than dragon tears i think uh and then i started another Koontz book the fun house um this one is very weird this one is starts off with a woman killing her child because it's a like a monster and it sound it, the description was so gross i was like yeah i don't know what happened <laughs> like that is gross um and then uh now the guy her husband um vowed kind of like a curse on her that he was going to find her when it, she has a new family and kill her children whenever she has new, more children because she killed his child and yeah it has this awesome step back um i'm already getting like the carnival vibes like you get that right off the bat and then you get like way more carnival vibes um i'm at right now uh but yeah it was really an interesting way to start a book for sure um i think andrew told me that this is based off of a movie this is a movie novelization or a movie tie-in uh i have not seen the movie if it's what i'm thinking about i don't think it has anything to do with like a weird baby or a monster baby or something in it but um yeah very weird so i'm definitely going to finish this one too um i'm thinking these count up as paperbacks from hell um i think some coons is mentioned in the grady hendrix book i just don't know when they were published i guess it doesn't matter does it matter uh oh yeah the 80s so yeah totally uh and then i definitely want to get to stage fright i added this one to my 23 and 23 and then i already started uh yesterday i started the lizzie borden and by elizabeth instrom i'm 60 pages in uh and this is like a fictionalized account of lizzie borden uh and it sounds pretty interesting like her author's note at the beginning was like oh this is just like lizzie was looking for justice or something and i was like okay let's see what angle are you gonna you're gonna do uh because she also talks about how there's not a lot of information even on the case which i'm like really i mean this was written in the early 90s so maybe not as much as there is now i feel like there's a lot now like there's stuff like lizzie's innocent and stuff so um it is kind of fun but it's also kind of boring but it's fun because it's like old school it's like 1800 stuff going on so it's very atmospheric and uh victorian like uh and yeah i'm digging the writing um i like elizabeth instrum's writing so uh yeah i'm excited for that did you hear my shoulder just pop i don't know if you guys heard that i am seeing barbie tonight i am super excited i might check in after i see it uh for some thoughts but i get to see it with some girlfriends uh and yeah i'm excited to see it uh finally uh and yeah that is this vlog also there will be a halloween stuff happening and the halloween decor hunting or decorating or some diys i want to try out this week i do have a little bit more time than usual this week um not so much but some <laughs> so i will be checking in later
Okay, so it has been a full day since I last checked in. Uh, it has been interesting. Um, I think when I left uh, you guys off, I was I went and saw Barbie, uh, and that was an absolute delight. Um, I went on a discount night, so it was packed, and uh, everybody was wearing pink in the theater, and like laughing and like clapping and cheering at parts and yeah it was definitely a fun experience to see with some friends uh and yeah it was a blast so highly recommend checking that one out um <laughs> if i seem a little bit groggy i just woke up from like a 10 minute nap <laughs> i was like oh my god i have to vlog i am on uh my friend jack's channel tonight doing like a little interview thing um Jack in the book stack. I will link the interview down below uh, and her channel. Uh, so I'm so excited to do that tonight. Uh, so I'm like, I have to wake up and I have to like cook dinner and stuff. Uh, but yeah, I have been working and I've finished some books. Uh, so I finished Fun House. Wow. There were choices made in this one. Uh, this is garbage. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so there is like a friend in this who is so vulgar like she says the most vulgar shit I've ever heard uh, and I'm like Coons what are you doing did you know a friend like this like what the heck <laughs> uh, but yeah I think I'm leaning towards a two star for this because it was like kind of really religious -y for no reason um, and really vulgar for no reason but I did like some aspects of it but uh, overall I was kind of like is something gonna happen and then like it all happened at the very very end uh, this is a quick listen uh, and yeah I was like, what the heck the language this girl, this high schooler uses is like nothing I've ever heard anybody talk like. So I was like, what the heck is going on? Uh, and also like people's motives and stuff. Very convoluted and weird. Um, I am interested in the movie though. <laughs> Here it's awful. Uh, but yeah, anyways, that was weird. That was a weird one. Um, and then I ended up reading... <laughs> a John Somm book. I don't know why. I don't, because I, I hate myself. That's what I've been telling people. Um, I hate myself apparently, so I started listening to Nathaniel, which wasn't even on my TBR this month. It's just the own, um, one of the audios on there. I think Creature was on my TBR in Shadows, but I didn't see Creature, um, on Scribd, but they have a bunch of John Saw books on there. Uh, but they had Nathaniel. This was published in 1984, so I'm gonna count it as a paperback from hell. Uh, and yeah, this is really trashy. Uh, <laughs> this was very boring. I was just, like, waiting for something to happen. Uh, it was very melodramatic and all that stuff. Uh, it, this is a small town. It's like a farm, um, as you can tell, it takes place. Uh, and this dude goes back home to his hometown and ends up falling through a hayloft onto a pitchfork. Convenient. Uh, and his family's like, why would he even go home? Because, like, we didn't even know he, like, was from here. And, um, yeah, there's, like, a lot of secrets and stuff. Uh, there's some weird stuff with the babies that are being born that's happening. I'm trying not to give away the actual thing in this. I mean, it wasn't anything big or <laughs> anything like that. It was weird. Uh, but, yeah, it was very bizarre and slow. Uh, but there's some stuff that I did like in it. Um, I liked the whole mystery aspect of it. There's a really mean grandpa in this that I thought was funny. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm in terms of 2.5 star. Um, I think Midnight Voices is still like my favorite John Saw, which I gave a three star. Uh, but yeah, I was pretty much waiting for this one to be over. Uh, listening to you. <laughs> I was like, please make it stop. <laughs> Uh, and then I did finish a book that is not considered trash, or I wouldn't consider it, it like a garbage, a garbogist read. Uh, I had a Libby Hold that I was about to give out, so I listened to it, and it's been on my TBR cart forever, and that's all our little secrets by Wanda M. Morris. This is a thriller, and I thought it was going to be a legal thriller because she is a lawyer, uh, but it doesn't end up being like that. So she's actually a corporate lawyer, which I know sounds more boring than legal thriller, but it's actually a murder mystery type of thriller or like a serial killing thriller. Um, I was not expecting this to go so freaking dark. I was li listening to it in Marshalls today and I was like, 
what I like probably froze I was like what the heck uh <laughs> I was not doing some Halloween decor hunting and yeah this got so freaking dark with her like past was very dark but also like the situation she found herself in um in the present line was also incredibly dark and disturbing and like has me questioning things uh, <laughs> about real real life stuff uh anyways she is a corporate lawyer for like a major southern uh shipping um company and her boss who she's having an affair with she walks in on him and he is dead she thinks it looks like suicide the cops thought it was a suicide at first but it was not a suicide and then a bunch of other stuff starts happening and she has to kind of figure out this mystery while revealing her past uh stuff because of course she has a bunch of secrets so yeah i really enjoyed this one i think i'm leaning towards like a 4.5 or a 5 star my only thing is that i had a tough time differentiating like the bad guys in this or like the southern dudes in this all sounded the freaking same <laughs> uh which is fine i was just confused about like just the story in general when i couldn't figure out who was who uh, but overall, I mean, I still really enjoyed it and I don't think it took away anything from it. But yeah, I'm so glad I finally uh, listened to this one. And then I did end up reading a hundred or so pages of Lizzie Borden by Elizabeth Instrom. Uh, I've been reading this one at night before bed uh, and it almost feels like you're watching like a really good um like historical reenactment <laughs> uh happening uh so yeah i'm enjoying this one it feels very cozy like it feels very atmospheric and cozy uh and yeah it's just it's just like a cozy thing for some reason i don't know why uh but yeah i'm enjoying this one and hopefully i will finish it and then i do want to read i'm gonna pick up stage fright and hopefully a another smut book so knock out another paperback from hell and hopefully finish this one is Thursday, so we'll see how much more I could get done. I am working, of course, all weekend. I think I'm working like 50 days straight or something ridiculous because I hate myself apparently. <laughs> uh, I did have to run to Michael's today because I made an executive decision um, on something I saw very briefly when I was in a rush um, decor hunting last week, and that is this bat. Oh my gosh. It is so cute. I had to get it and I used the rest of my gift card so and a coupon so it only cost me five dollars but I think he's originally like 17 but yeah he was the last one left so I'm glad I got him when I did. Uh, yeah so cute and like how adorable. He almost looks like a little flasher though. <laughs> uh, but yeah uh, I have bought a lot of stuff. <laughs> I have recently gone insane with Halloween stuff. Um, I just know like stuff is disappearing super quickly. So if I'm seeing it and um, I can't make a decision then or the line's too long because a lot of times I'm on like a very tight schedule. I, I won't get it then and I have to like run back and then I'll like beat myself up over it but uh yeah it is it is happening it's happening very quickly so like definitely get the pieces like you see and want because it's going to be gone <laughs> sadly uh so yeah I'm glad I got this and I think I'm done with Michaels this year um I got like the two things I really wanted uh and then I did get more stuff at Marshall's and um not home goods though um but home goods did have some really weird pumpkin stuff for some reason they had a lot of teethy pumpkins they even had a pumpkin with like teeth they put teeth in and like look made it look like they were knocked out and i was like what okay that's a choice that is a choice there uh what has happened to this pumpkin uh <laughs> but yeah i um uh, plan on hopefully tomorrow after one of my after one of my jobs after work tomorrow I will be near the spirit Halloween so hopefully I will get to go in there and um and be in spirit uh, which is very very exciting uh and yeah because I haven't been in one yet this year it's like it's like a Christmas miracle or something. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Uh, but yeah, I will do a bigger haul at the end of this vlog uh, because I have gotten so much stuff. Uh, and yeah, so stay tuned. More papers at backs from hell and smut.
chew cum. That sounded really bad. Oh God. If you're looking for somewhere safe, you can hide in the hole I dug out back. It's six feet deep and very cozy. I'll even tuck you in with a few layers of soil on top to have a nice long rest. I know the worms would appreciate you. <laughs> Okay, so editing Katrina here, uh, I realized the last clip I filmed for this vlog uh, didn't have any sound because my mic wasn't all the way plugged in. So here I am uh, the next day <laughs> um, trying not to cry, but um, I'm here filming this vlog because I it was kind of a, this vlog, this clip to the end of this vlog, oh my gosh. Um, it is kind of a long clip because as you can see I have Halloween stuff around me because uh, I decided to do the haul at the end. I should have done it at the beginning or as I was buying stuff. But anyways, here we are. So I shall show you my haul. Uh, so I got some pumpkins. I got the stack of pumpkins from Ross for $12.99 and it lights up. Uh, I thought this was a good deal because I think Target is going to have like something very similar this year is what I've been seeing in videos and I think it's 20 so if I saw it for 13 I thought that was a good deal and there's only one left at Ross. Ross is like a crazy picked over yard sale for Halloween <laughs> stuff uh, and then I got um, the classic pumpkin that lights up from at home for $10. Um, I feel like he has like kind of like he sticks out a lot here uh, but yeah I was excited to get those and then I got this little guy from Marshalls. I had to. So cute. I don't know if it's going to focus on him but he looks like really vintagey and cute with those half moon eyes and he was $6.99. Oh and the egg corn, <laughs> candy corn <laughs> buttons here uh, and then you guys know I had to get this mug because of the pumpkin ghost. It's a ghost and a pumpkin and I did not see the bat one there. I really want the bat one though too. Ugh, I need both. And then I had to get this scaredy cat with pumpkins and a bat. This is my new favorite. Well, both of these are my new favorite mugs. Um, this one's actually still wet because I used it this morning. And then I got this cute little bag, um, shopping bag with the cats dressed up as characters. I love the ghost one, um, but also the pumpkin one guy I think is really cute too. But the ghost one is so cute because he's like, I'm a ghost, boo, you know? And then I got some press-on nails for $5 at Marshall's too at checkout. Um, I actually had the same exact ones last year and I really like them because they go in the dark. They're so fun and they're really goofy and like whimsical. Uh, so yeah, I was excited to find those. Um, and then I did finish Stage Fright by Gary. I always want to say Gary. It's Garrett Boatman. Um, this was really wild. Honestly, I thought this was about musical instruments that like possess people and stuff, but it's not that at all. It's freaking um, like a dreamatron thing. It's like dreams and dream like these dudes dreams that he was in a band and he's like trying to do this dream stuff because he wants to have really intense dreams is where his ideas come from but the dreams end up being coming reality and like there's a part at the very beginning so it's not really a spoiler where there was like a dra freaking dragon like eating people 
and I was like, yes, I, I need more dragons eating people. That like doesn't happen again. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was very weird and crazy and a lot of characters in this, I feel like, to where I was like, hold up, who the heck are we even talking about? Are we talking about this reporter guy who's like recording everything? Um, are we with another band member? Are we with the scientists? Like I kept getting kind of mixed up with that. Um, but that's my only complaint. And also dreams are very boring to me, uh, <laughs> usually. Uh, but I thought it was cool that it was actually like becoming real life or like becoming stuff that is real. Um, and then I wanted the Halloween, the big Halloween concert that he was planning on doing, uh, and that, like, doesn't happen either, and I'm all about Halloween, and I'm all about that mixing together and music, because I'm from Richmond, and we have guar, and duh, uh, so, yeah, I, I wanted to, I wanted to read about um, and that just didn't happen, so I was a little disappointed with it. Um, and also, this is really long. It was a, it was a long one, um, but it was very fun. I had a lot of fun with it, so I think I'm leaning towards a four star for it. Um, or if if anything, if anything changes, it would only be a three point five. Uh, but definitely round up to four on Goodreads. And then I did finish Lizzie Borden as well in this vlog, and I forget what I even said about this, but. So, what I liked about this book is that Lizzie Borden was made unreliable, like an unreliable narrator. Uh, there was some cool sapphic stuff in this um, because it was rumored that Lizzie was a lesbian. Um, and yeah, she made the relationships with women in this or like her girlfriends and stuff like really believable and realistic and I think it like made Lizzie like a more interesting character which I don't usually get but I thought it was cute I was like oh she's like got a crush on somebody I think that's cute and like when it's reciprocated and stuff I was like rooting for her and uh these relationships uh and I liked that uh and yeah the ending I really liked the ending to this and like how, how it was done and it was pretty clever. Of course, it doesn't go into the trial or anything. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it. I Overall, I think I said it was really atmospheric and like kind of cozy it is. And I really like Lizzie as a character. Her sister though, so obnoxious. And also like, did she do it? <laughs> you know, like her sister was like pretty ruthless in this. Um, and I destroyed this book reading it physically. <laughs> I kept like every time I'd pick it up, like a piece of it would fall off in my hand. So I feel kind of bad about that, but what are you gonna do? Um, there's no audio for it. Uh, and then I ended up reading this after I, fi or I finished it after the fact of me with this vlog. Um, I finished it this morning, 22 Hollowfield by Doris Shannon. This is like a total knockoff of freaking Rosemary's baby without a pregnancy. This is about a girl, Nancy, moves into an apartment building in New York City and she knows immediately something is up. Oh gosh, she's so annoying. She's like, I was raised by witches so I know they're Satanist here. Like, what Nancy? Nancy? It was crazy like off the bat so like reading her POV was just like okay like I, I she's not a sympathetic character either I was just like whatever like a pretty throwaway person I feel like um our character in this book and it's so boring it's just people talking oh, she does find like some bodies and stuff it's more of a murder mystery until like everything's revealed spoiler alert they were Satanist. Oh no. Uh, but yeah, I think the cover of this is really cool and I only spent like two bucks on it. Um, if that, it probably ended up being less. But yeah, a total rip off of freaking Rosemary's Baby. Poor, just not well written at all. Um, this is the epitome of garbage. I feel like of the gothic, the 70s gothic. Um, trash that is out there um but yeah I was like oh my god this is so trash because it totally ripped off first major's baby so and it was very boring um it has a weird smell I don't I'm not gonna knock off a star for that I'm just gonna give it two stars uh but yeah 
that was it. That is me ending this vlog. I also did a freaking, I'm so mad because I did do a taste test of that cotton candy and you guys can't see it. Um, but basically that cotton candy tasted like sour apple and it was just white. Um, but yeah, that's the end of this. Uh, I, I will not be vlogging uh, next week because it's novelizations and read a book by a famous person. I don't think I'm going to get to any novelizations, sadly or a book by a famous person, uh, but the last week is Anything Goes, so I could pl oh, blah, blah, blah. I am planning on continuing reading some trashy paperbacks from hell. That is what I'm trying to say, <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, that is the end of this. Let me know if you've been Halloween hunting or reading any trashy books or what books have you been reading in August, and I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Bye!